Welcome, welcome. Let's open in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you as we've come here tonight to our this month's of Kingdom Business, this month's Kingdom Business Fellowship. I ask for the Holy Spirit to move mightily in our midst. I ask that the Word of God will come with power, with anointing, to prepare us, to equip us, to challenge us, to stir us up. I thank you, even as I share the word right now, that you anoint me and that you anoint every heart and every ear to hear what you have to say to the church. Thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, let me tell you, I'm, I'm so quickened by this. I cannot even tell you right now. I am so quickened in my spirit concerning change. I just keep hearing it over and over in my spirit change and and I felt I was praying about what to share on tonight and I mean it just popped in my spirit I knew and this is really spiritual keys to success in changing times because we are in a time of change rapid rapid change all right rapid change and um, we're in a time of rapid change and if you don't move with the Holy Ghost you'll be left behind and I mean really left behind even at the end you know like left behind in, in the rapture but 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 we don't want to be left behind in terms of right now we are in a time of real change and flux in the world economy. Many of you have even heard about this great reset, right? Who's heard about the great reset? Now they even wrote a book on it. Now that's a demonic thing. That is a demonic antichrist globalist agenda. And even you hear now just this last week, uh, Biden signed an executive order to basically start the process uh, of a digital central bank currency. Now, that's not crypto. That is not decentralized finance crypto. That is centralized, you know, World Bank, Federal Reserve, you know, money changer, controlled currency. And you can see there's been a constant attack even on crypto. And we did a lot of training on crypto with uh, John Barry. Uh, I believe it was in it would have been October and November, and those are on YouTube to watch. By the way, we are posting these trainings on YouTube, so go to our River West Palm Beach uh, YouTube channel, and then we have a, um, a playlist on KBF, Kingdom Business Fellowship, and you can watch the last several months. And I did training on leadership vision. Who was here for that in January and February? I don't know. That was powerful. I felt it was amazing. I felt people are miss, missing out, but again, those are available on YouTube if you were not here, or I believe you should go back and, and, and watch those things again, because we really started out the year with vision, and, and one of the things, I mean, this is going to be a big year. I really believe this is going to be a big year for people moved by the Holy Spirit. I have no doubt about it, okay? I have no doubt about it, because as God's people, the Spirit of God always and always and always makes a way. You know, He's the way maker. I am not moved by any circumstances. I'm not moved by some war, by the war in Ukraine. I'm not picking any sides. People are trying to get me to pick sides. Are you on Russia's side, Ukraine's side? I'm on God's side. Okay, I'm on the side of the Holy Ghost because He has a plan. He has a purpose. And what we need to understand is, of course, we are in rapidly changing times. Times are changing. And one of the things we're hearing now, and we've known this, and, and we've been ahead of the curve. I don't believe we're too late. We're just in time. We're praying. The Lord's opening up things, but you know, there's coming, you can see what's happening with the gas prices, predicted food shortages, and I've been saying this for years, that the world's food supply is like only good for a month, and now they're saying in some areas it's only good for two, two weeks. So what's going to happen? You know, does that mean we're, we're, we're going to be in a lot of trouble? Well, obviously we're going to be affected, but what we need to understand is as believers, we're not to be shaken, we're not to be in fear. But these are the times to really understand what the Spirit of God is speaking. Because if you're not careful, you'll just listen to the news. You'll just keep, you know, you'll just put your eyes on the circumstances and you'll be moved and shaken by them and you will fail. You know, that's what Jesus said about the last days. Man's hearts will fail them for the tribulation or the trouble of the, of the last days. And so, and when you hear of wars and news and reports of wars and pestilence and famine and shortage and this and that he said do not be troubled for these things must take place you know before the end comes but this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in every nation as a witness and then the end shall come so what does that mean for us as christian business people are i called into now this is for this is a business meeting i mean when i'm talking about business meeting this is we're going to talk business stuff here this is what it is this is not just a church service this is to really specifically speak into the lives 
of people in the marketplace. This is a marketplace ministry. This is about evangelizing the marketplace, and this is about raising up multimillionaires for the end time harvest, to fund the end time harvest. Do we have any of those here in this place tonight? Hallelujah. Because we got, we got vision. Um, today we had, and this afternoon, Pastor Rose and I, we had a Zoom call for an hour concerning, you know, just looking at the vision that we have for River Christian Academy, you know, and we spoke with uh, a lady that runs a Christian uh, school, K through 12, and has been doing it for 40 years. And, you know, we, we've been, we're, we're strategizing. We have, we have vision. We, we don't like for vision. You know, when, you, when you're full of the Holy Ghost and fire, you're not going to lack for vision. But what it is, it's wonderful to have vision. We talked about that in January. We talked about that in February. It's wonderful to have vision. But then you've got to have action. You've got to have an action plan. You know, you've got to do your due diligence. There's a lot of people who want to start businesses, but they never do. Because it takes work to start a business. It takes risk, faith, you know. And, you know, what's that? Discipline. discipline. And, and, of course, there's a risk, discipline. And you've got to change. I mean... And that's the thing that's really been stirring in me, change, change, change. Because times are changing, and usually church people are like always behind. They're like the tail. But the Word says we are to be the head, not the tail. And we are to be above only, not beneath. And so um, we have to be on point, you know. The times of business as usual, not only for churches, but also for businesses are over. You can't just do business as usual. Things change all the time. There's rapid change taking place. Daniel prophesied about it. He said people will travel to and fro in the last days and knowledge shall increase. And if you're not increasing in knowledge, you'll be left behind. So that's what I'm talking about. So we've got to be ready to change, ready to grow. I talked about the four C's. Um, uh, some, uh, I actually did a KBF into River Koshokton Church on Saturday evening on Zoom. Um, and uh, that, there's about 35 people there too. And it was powerful. And... and um, uh, with Pastor Zach Weber there, uh, he's a young pastor. He's only 30 years old. He started the church about at age 21, you know, but it's now starting to take off. Pastor Vincent's been there to preach, and he was going there when he had like three people meeting in a little tiny room. Now they got a nice big place. They can seat like 200 people, and it's growing. They got a Bible school going. And then I felt in my spirit about a month ago, he just popped up in my spirit. I was driving, and I texted him, and I hadn't even talked to him in a long time. I said, do you do KBF over there? And he texted me back, he goes, we're about to do our first one in 20 minutes. That was on a Saturday. I was like, oh, wow, let me know how it goes. And I said, I felt to help you. He goes, yes, I need help. I need help. Would you speak to KBF? So I zoomed into KBF and, you know, shared on some powerful things. And, and actually, some of the stuff that I'm going to share tonight with you, I share with them. Of course, I share for an hour and a half, so I don't, I'm not going to use an hour and a half tonight. But we got all other speakers and training opportunities because we always do a spiritual and some practical stuff. But... You know, the, the thing is, and I, and I shared the, the four C's here, you know, um, uh, let me think about the four C's to success, basically. Number one, character. Okay, I talked about that. Capacity, courage, and culture. Capacity. We have to increase our capacity. Most people don't prosper because they have low capacity. What does that mean? They're not changing. They're not growing. They're not learning. You know, so times are changing. We have to stay with it. We have to grow. We have to learn. I mean, think about how many people were left behind on the whole crypto. I mean, everybody says, I wish I had bought stock in Apple back in 1985. Of course, everybody says that now, right? Or I had, wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. Well, why didn't you? Well, most of the time because we don't know what's going on or people are in fear. I mean, I actually had people leave the church because we did training on crypto, by the way. I had a lady leave the church because we did training on crypto, because she thought it was the devil's money, and I was bringing the spirit of Antichrist into the church. I kid you not. That's how dumb some people are and still breathe. Okay. No, I'm serious. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And then you look at the person, they're in total poverty, almost living on food stamps, and then here we are trying to get people to expand their capacity, their mind, and then you get attacked for it. I just laugh it off, you know. And it's not my first rodeo. So 27 years of ministry, it's, it's actually one of the nicest things people have said. Spirit of Antichrist, that's not too bad, you know. But, I mean, I've had people, you know, paint devil's horns on my head and, and ran a website about me in Turkey. So I'm not, you know. One guy thought it was his mission. 
every Monday to take my sermon from Sunday and analyze it and criticize it and to protect people from the false prophet and the teacher that I am, you know, so, but whatever. Because we preach on prosperity. We believe on, in prosperity, but we believe in prosperity with a purpose. Yeah. Say this after me. Prosperity, prosperity with a purpose. What is the purpose? To build the kingdom of God, to fund the end time harvest, to build the kingdom, fund kingdom vision. We got vision. We're talking about now, uh, you know, launching farming. We're talking about now, we're doing that. We have, and we were praying and then, and, and, and I like the fact that I don't have to buy the land, you know. It's like Joseph, he just walked into it. You know, I, I believe for favor that we're going to walk into things. So I want you to have favor and believe, have faith for favor that you're just going to walk into things this year. Because you can think, well, you know, land is so expensive. Well, why do you think you have to buy it and own it? Just walk into it, you know. So believe God for favor. So one of the things is, one of the keys to success in these changing times is going to have to be favor because favor just repositions you. What, what takes people five, ten years to get to, by the favor of God, boom, you'll just be positioned there. So I'm believing for supernatural favor to reposition you to the right place, right time, right connections. Come on, somebody. In the realm of business, you're going to be positioned in, in places in Jesus' mighty name. Who's going to receive that right now? I speak and decree favor over you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I know that, you know, we have the Holy Ghost. And that's going to keep us one, one step ahead of the devil and his plans. I shared this on Sunday. I'm going to share it again. So if you heard it, you're going to hear it again. It's good. Somebody say, amen. I want to hear it again. Amen. All right. Go to Genesis chapter 26. Look at this. There was a famine in the land. All right. Food shortage. Whatever. Economic chaos. Whatever you want to call it. Besides the first famine. So there will always be famines. That was in the days of Abraham. Of course, that's Isaac's father. So previous generation had one. Now this generation, his generation is having one. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Because that was what his plan was in his head. He was making a plan in his natural thinking. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. And that's so important to have the word of the Lord. Dwell in this land and I will be with you and I will bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. Because one word right there is that's the key. I will bless you. I will bless you and I will multiply you. I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands. See, he's just gonna he's gonna give you lands, he's gonna give you favor, he's gonna give you promotion. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Now go down to 12. Then Isaac sowed in the land or in that land. Which land? The land of famine where he was trying to leave thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. If I go down to Egypt, maybe my conditions will be more favorable in the natural. You see... It's not the conditions being more favorable. It's about having the favor of God. It's about having the favor of God. And reaped in the same year 100-fold, and the Lord blessed him. Come on, somebody. The Lord blessed him. For the man began to prosper, continued prospering, until he became very prosperous. So if you have a, if you have a problem with the word prosperity, this verse is going to really cause you to manifest i mean it's in there three times if i say prosperity and, and you go like that and if, I, if i say this word says it three times i believe one from the father one from the son one from the holy ghost if you have a problem with prosperity you're going to really 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 have a problem with this verse the man prospered he continued prospering until he became very prosperous in a time of famine so i don't care what's going to happen i really don't care what they're planning the great reset we opt out. I'm opting out. Who's opting out of the great reset? Amen. Because we are, we are opting in to God's favor and God's blessing. The great blessing. I got an answer to the great reset. The great blessing of the great God. That I'm going to prosper. I'm going to continue to prosper until I'm very prosperous. Until those Philistines will envy me. They're going to envy you. Amen. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. 
So the Philistines envied him. And then I, eventually Bimelech says, go away from us. You're much mightier or greater than, us, than we. So, but I've preached on this so many times. But then the Lord quickened something in me. I never thought about it this way. Because we always, you know, you see, you can, you can, take, you can take some verses and you just preach on. It, it's, it's mainly been an offering message that I've preached. You know, and you can kind of get stuck on seeing things only one way. Until, boom, the Lord gives you a different perspective and something quickens in you. You know what was quickened in me? He sowed seed in the land. And then immediately I realized the man became a rancher. He became a farmer. He launched a business. He launched a business in a time where it, was, it, it looked ridiculous to launch that type of business. I mean, maybe selling dirt or sand or something, you know. You know because there's a lot of dirt and sand. There's no, not, no water, so how are you going to sell water or whatever? You know, but, oh, you know. No, I'm just saying, look, <laughs> water machine, okay. Living water, all right. No, look, it's famine, and it's a drought. It, all we have is sand and, and just dust. So I guess the, all, all I can do is just sell dust. You know, who's going to buy dust? You know what I'm saying? They, naturally thinking, it is the last thing. And the man became a rancher. He had herds. He had flocks. You know, there's a shortage. There's literally a food shortage. And the guy is launching a business farming and ranching. And the Lord prospered him, and he continued to prosper until... His herds and flocks and everything increased and his influence increased. So what appears to be a problem is actually opportunity when God gives you the right perspective. All right. Then go to 2 Kings chapter 4. I'm going to be done here in a few minutes and I'm going to have Pastor Vincent kind of piggyback on this because the Lord's given him and Pastor Lisa some words about this. And of course, I mean, Pastor Rose... I mean, she's been telling me for, you, for a long time, and we knew that when we came from Turkey to West Palm that we were going to have farming and ranching, all this stuff. You know, I was believing for it, and, then, and now, of course, things are opening up because it's the time. It's, it's the right time. But again, it's one thing to have a vision. It's another thing to really, really, you know, to, to, get, into, um, to, to, to get into action. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 4. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. I'll keep this part short. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? She said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Everyone say, a jar of oil. Usually the first response is, I have nothing, but... She did have a jar of oil, but what good is a jar of oil? Nothing. And again, you know, we, we use a, a lot of this, of course, if you, you know, river circles. These are all like offering messages, you know, sowing, giving, you know, how God's going to multiply and all this. But again, something is quickened in my spirit because I want you to see this. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it out into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. All right, wonderful. So she gets a word. That's a strategy. Everyone say strategy. Yeah. So she gets a word. Now she's pouring the oil and all these empty vessels are now filled. Now she's got all this oil. Well, that still doesn't solve her problem. So the miracle, so the Lord gave her a miracle. See, a lot of times we just, I just if I can just get that miracle, it's going to solve all my problems. God doesn't work that way. God gives you a miracle, but then now you have to go do something. See, the anointing comes to make a way for you, but then you are always going to be, have to be engaged. All right? So she went from him, shut the door, okay, you know, behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. And, of course, now it came to pass when the vessels were full. Then she said to her son, bring me another vessel. So, and then they said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. So now she's got all these pots, pans, containers full of oil. All right, wonderful. Wow, what a miracle. Well, it still doesn't solve her problem. She's still in debt, right? And they're still going to come and take her two sons away. Now what do I do? And this is what's been quickened in me. Check this out. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons sh shall live on the rest. She went into business. 
selling oil, basically. She went into business selling oil. This was something she had never done in her life. And I'm, and I'm telling you right now, God's going to give you strategies, and a lot of times it's going to blow your mind, or you're going to think, I can't do that, or I've never done that. I don't know how to do that. You better change. You better learn quickly. Otherwise, you're going to get left behind. And times are changing right now. And I just feel that so strongly in my spirit that we have to have a sense of urgency. I mean, I'm talking to people that are like, uh, maybe next year. You don't have till next year. You need to do something now. Stop procrastinating and get moving. I just, want, I just feel that so strongly. Get some fire on your tail. Start running with the vision. So how do we succeed the keys to success in changing times? And I wrote down some, down some things. Number one, faith over fear. Faith over fear, of course. And, we know, and the kind of faith that's going to take risks and action. That was risky to go collect all those vessels. That was risky to go start sowing seed in the land of famine. When You know everybody was mocking him. Everybody thought he was crazy. Same thing with the woman. Everybody thought she's crazy collecting all these empty vessels, right? Second one, you need a divine strategy. Divine strategies over getting in your natural head, get natural mind. You cannot get in your mind. You're going to have to have a divine strategy. You need to seek the Lord, and, and you need to be open to be ready to change. Change. If you don't change, if you don't do new things, if you're not open to new ideas, strategies that God's going to give you, you'll be left behind. Be ready to change. That's number three, of course. And then you're going to have to move obstacles out of your way because there will be obstacles. You're going to have to move some mountains, and, and what you speak, what you say is going to be the key. You have to be led by the Holy Ghost to know where and when. Positioning and timing, and that's what I'm talking about. Positioning, divine positioning is going to be the key. See, Isaac could have gone to Egypt and he would not have prospered and succeeded there. The woman could have tried something else. She would not have prospered and succeeded. They had to do exactly what the Lord told them. Go inside your house and shut the door. That's where the miracle is going to take place. Then go outside of your door and then go into the highways and byways and the neighborhoods and whatever and then sell all this oil so she actually went into business. She became a businesswoman, and you know she was a housewife, prophet's wife. She had never done this before. And I hear the people all the time saying, well, I'm just not good at business. You better get good at it. And I'm speaking to KBF here. You're here because this is Kingdom Business Fellowship. So, all right. You're going to have to have the correct voices speaking to you. See, Isaac could have listened to Abimelech. He would have been in trouble. He listened to the Lord. The woman could have listened to the neighbors, or she could have failed to listen to the prophet thinking, this is a crazy idea. What do you mean? Why do I have to borrow all these empty vessels? You're going to have to have the right voices speaking to you. You're going to have to explore new avenues and think outside the box. You're going to have to be ready to work hard, and I mean very hard. Then the supernatural grace of God will come on you for supernatural increase. It was hard work what Isaac did, sowing seed, reaping it. The Bible says he reaped. He wasn't just there, and seed didn't just plant itself and then harvest it. He had to work very, very hard. And then now you're getting cattle and, and herds. That's, that's a lot more labor even. So he had to put in the labor. A lot of times we just see it as like, you know, boom, it's just a big miracle, and then blessing comes. He had to work hard. He had to labor. Amen. And the woman had to labor. And they had to work hard. Go out there and sell the oil. The oil, when, he, when she poured from the jar, money didn't pour out. Oil poured out. And then she still had to go sell that oil. So that's hard work. You're going to have to work hard. And you're going to have to have some good partnership. Partnering with Elijah was the key, or Elisha, sorry, was the key with, for the woman. Pastor Vincent, jump up here, grab the mic, and share a few things that the Lord's given you. Speak All right. about some things well, it's, about it's, the times. It's just a, a little journey that the Lord's taken me on here um, recently. Started with my sister who lives in Germany. 
And uh, she told us that my niece's fiance, who works for kind of like a, I guess like, would be like their Walmart there. And he's the manager. He runs the whole thing. And he got called up and said, listen, yeah, you need to be prepared because there's only around what it's looking like, two weeks left of, of food coming into the store because the truckers are refusing to move the food now because the, the, the gas is too expensive. So that kind of got my attention and I thought, well, their problem is our problem. You know, how's it affecting us? And then, uh, yeah, recently, it's kind of weird because God started talking to me about cows. And I went, cows? Like, what the heck? I thought, Lord, you want me to buy a cow? <laughs> you know, I mean, what do I know about a cow, you know? <laughs> I mean, I know they're part of the problem with the, the you know, the, the, the earth warming up. But, but I, I thought, well, who do I know about cows? <laughs> so I called a friend of mine up in um, uh, northern Alabama who owns a, he's actually a, a headmaster of a, of a school of about 2,000 kids, but he farms on the side because he's, he's from Alabama, you know. So, so he's, he's, I think he has like five or eight, 15 or 18 cows. So I thought, well, Lord, if you want me to buy a cow, I'm going to ask him. I'm going to buy a cow, and he can raise it for me. I was thinking like that. You know, I thought, cows, I don't know anything about cows. So I called him up, and he just started speaking to me about the issues over there. And I, I, I knew then why the Lord had me do it. Because he told me, he says, look, it's bad here. He said, the whole thing that you know, have to know about raising cows, it all, it all has to do with buying bales of hay, which usually costs in that area, where they are at least, around $30. Well, the hay has gone up to $100 plus, which, I mean, how much increase is that? And I mean, and he said, we're a, I'm small. I've only got 15 to 18 cows. But basically, just the hay side of things is, put, is putting me out of business. And he said, there's big farms around him where they do thousands of cows, and, and not only that, they've got the, um, they do normal farming, like, like growing wheat and, and everything else, and they're all talking, they're saying, look, this thing with the, with the, the, the gas prices and the fertilizer that we need, a lot of the big farms around there are talking about, if this carries on, we might only be able to stay open for another month. And, and that's in that part, and I say, is that everywhere? He says, oh, you get, I guarantee you. Farmers are, are saying we cannot continue like this, and it's not like six months of a year. They're talking, that a lot of farms exist month to month. So that, that I thought, wow, you know, because that kind of confirmed to me the problem we face is very real. It's not just over in Ukraine. It's right here in, in, in our backyard. We're talking the U.S., and if that's happening in Alabama, Florida, that's, that's the biggest cattle producing state in the United States. I don't know if you knew that, that Florida is the biggest. Think about what's happening here, just with the, the biggest industry in the state of Florida. You know, in the beginning of this year, the Lord started speaking to me that this year is a year of investment. And, um, and I've had that in my heart. I've always thought to myself, well... You know, investment is you got to be able to, what you invest, you need to be able to eventually live off of. I was trying to think about investment. But Sunday, the Lord got hold of me and started talking to me about Joseph. And I thought, well, Lord, you know, you've kind of given me a, a subject that to me is like a cliche subject. I know the story of Joseph. He had a dream. He was the favorite. He got a multicolored coat made his brothers jealous, they threw him into the pit, sold him to Potiphar, he went to prison, went from prison to being the prime minister of, of, of Egypt, but what is it about him? And the Lord spoke to me and said, the thing about Joseph is he interpreted the dream of, of Pharaoh, and by interpreting the dreams of Pharaoh, he, he discerned the times and the issues of what the world was going through. And I, and I want to read you some scriptures here. Maybe as quick as I can. It's hard to work with. Genesis 47 verse 15. This is all around Joseph. 
And it says, so when the money failed, think about that. <laughs> when the money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, give us bread. Because the thing about Joseph is he discerned it, but God also gave him wisdom how to prepare for it. You know, and I, I believe that's what we, we're in now. And we don't have a lot of time, but I believe the fact that God's speaking to us means there's enough time. It just means we can't dilly-dally. All right? And they said, give us bread, for why should we die in your presence? For the money has failed. Because let's think about it. If there's problems with food shortages, what is money really? Genesis 41, verse 53, it says, Then the seven years of plenty which were in the land of Egypt ended, and the seven years of famine began to come, as Joseph has say, had said, because remember he interpreted it, he heard from the Lord. And I believe we've heard from the Lord. It feels like we're behind, but I think there's supernatural increase and in where God really will do it quick for us. And the seven years of famine began to come, as Joseph has said, and the famine was in all the lands, in all the lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. And I think if we really listen to the Lord, follow his direction, there will be, there will be bread, there will be provision for us, and not only for us, but we will, we will actually become a place where we provide for others. So we've got to prepare. You've got to prepare for yourself. You've got to prepare for your family. But you need to prepare in a way that you're thinking that, listen, now how can what I do now not only um, take care of myself and my family, but for others as well? You know, so we, we just went out practical, myself and, and Lisa, and we started buying food. We thought, well, what happens if the power goes out? So we bought generator that, that runs on gas and fuel. We also bought a power pack that runs on solar panels. Um, got a portable air conditioner because, look, in Florida, <laughs> you die. <laughs> Water. You know, Lisa, uh, my wife, got to the beginning of this year, this word from the Lord said, buy seed, sow seed. And so um, she started looking into hydroponics and all that kind of stuff in January, December, November already. And, and I think we've all kind of been feeling that anyway. I mean, a lot of us, and I, and I think now's the time. We need to get into how to store food, how to, how to, how to store food in long-term sense, how to do that. Th those, are, those are things that our grandmothers and great-grandmothers know how to do but it's a lost art. They were they they planned constantly for the for the future, and the and the reason for it is because they thought like farmers. And if you think about it, even if you go in, and I'll finish with this, Pastor Corey. Sure. If if you think about it, even if you go into our our famous scripture, Deuteronomy 28, where it says, you know, these blessings will come upon you. You're blessed go, going in and blessed coming out. That whole chapter there is about farming. Even the storehouses, opening the windows of heaven. Now there's going to be rain on the harvest. There'll be rain on the land. And we've got to think like farmers now. A farmer prepares, a farmer sows, a farmer takes the harvest in, but then he knows what to do with the harvest to prepare in case the next season is not good. So there's that whole preparation, and we need to think like Joseph, really, for ourselves, how to take care of ourselves, but also to to be in a position where we can be the answer to others when it happens. That, that's the word for it. Because, because unfortunately, the world has trained people to think like consumers. And when there's nothing to consume, they consume one another. Literally. The worst will be cannibalism. I'm serious. But we need to start changing our mindset and, um, uh, and, and think about business ideas in the realm of food. I'm serious right now. Food, food preparation, um, um, hydroponics, we're getting into that right now. I'm researching it. There's business opportunities opening up with that. I'm going to share with some of our business guys, and we can get on it. We can sell hydroponics all over the place and make money off of it too. That's another, because 
problem becomes opportunity. So um, seed. I'm looking into ways of buying seed now. And we're buying seed. You know, so um, guess what? You might buy it for a dollar now and sell it for 100 bucks. I'm serious because everybody's going to be looking for seed. So these are areas we need to start thinking about because uh, the Lord's speaking and we are preparing. And again, this is not doom and gloom. This is not to put fear in you. We are not in fear. But faith doesn't deny the facts. But faith believes God for the way and, and, and the direction to go. So, um, I mean, look at what they've been saying. Look at Bill Gates. Uh, you know, uh, we want to produce... Uh, um, uh, synthetic beef because the cows fart and it's all about climate change. We got to get rid of cows because of climate change, you know. And then of course we got to dim the sun because of climate change. So what? So what? Good, what good is your solar panels if they're trying to dim the sun? And what is all the all the green energy supposedly? Let's move to green energy. Everybody buy electric cars. Really? How are you going to charge it when the power grid fails? Because they're going to hack it, you know. So prepare, prepare, prepare. I mean, uh, all the preppers are feeling pretty good right now. People that have been, they've been mocking the preppers for all these years, they've been ahead of the game maybe. Yeah, so uh, start preparing and, and pray about business ideas in these areas because that's where the needs are going to be. And when you meet the needs, your business will always prosper. But I believe God's going to position us to meet the needs. And if you're down to a little jar of oil and one seed, you'll still prosper. I'm telling you right now. God is going to bless you and, 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 and God's going to prosper his people. God's going to provide for his people. I am absolutely 100% sure of it and I'm not moved in any shape or form. Not in fear. Not worried one bit. But we have work to do. So we have work to do. We have work to do. So we're launching farming, ranching, all of these. I'm getting into it. I'm getting, I'm getting into it. Oh, yeah. 100%. All right. Was that helpful? Yeah. All right. So who's going to pray and research and learn? I'm getting into an area I'm not too familiar with. What does that mean? I'm just going to, well, I don't know anything about that. I'm just going to uh, fast and pray. And just God's going to do something. No, he is doing something. He's speaking and he wants us to change and position and understand the things that are coming, you know. So, and that's what crypto was about, the training on that and other things that we are doing here. And um, it's, this is not your conventional business type thing. We, we are really on, we want to be on the cutting edge Holy Ghost. That's really kind of what it comes down to. All right, you ready to shift gears? All right, let's have uh, Brother John Berry so, come. Hi, everybody. Um, going to basically just, kind of give you a, a very big overview on cybersecurity, protecting yourself online um, in different practical ways. And um, you've got to look at privacy, fraud, etc. Very briefly, people might say, well, hey, John, you're the crypto guy. What do you know about this? Um, I wrote a book about this as well, by the way. It's on Amazon. It's called Hackproof, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> How to Protect Yourself Online. And uh, I worked for the largest uh, cybersecurity company in the world for eight years. I opened two international offices for them and uh, ran their relationships with a bunch of other big tech companies like Microsoft, Sun, etc. So, um, all right, this is just very practical. And if you've got questions, um, just stick your hand up. Let's make it interactive. So I just really wanted to cover a big picture here. What is a threat? What is the threat that we're talking about here? But for individuals, I'm not talking about you know, Russian hackers and Ukrainian hackers hacking governments and companies. This is you. You, know, you and me, we're online. We live in a digital world every day. So we're going to talk about cybersecurity, um, fraud, and privacy. And essentially, there's three big groups of people. First of all, there's Big Brother. Everyone's concerned about Big Brother, okay? Big government, okay? 1984 type stuff. The government's not really hacking us, you know, that's not the concern. They're not really fraudulent, they're not trying to sell us fake goods online and steal our credit card. The concern we have there is privacy. They want to track every single thing you do every minute of the day so they can control you. That's the ultimate end time antichrist mark of the beast system is going to be control uh, through digital currencies and, you know, chips. And if you don't agree, you can't buy or sell. So a good reason why you want to have your plot of land and farm and your small holding, not a plot, you know, I'm in America now. Yeah, Pastor Benson gets it. All right. And then there's big tech. 
big tech. Um, big tech, uh, they are, that's, you know, think fangs, um, as in Facebook, Amazon, you know, Google, the big companies. They um, have essentially been sucking up all of our personal data for years. Uh, and then there's a bunch of people, who knows what a, bro what a data broker is? Data broker, okay. Experian, the big companies out there, they have got thousands of data points on every single adult in America on uh, what you do and what your likes are from you know, cradle to the grave. And they sell it to anybody who can literally, you know, who can miss the mirror. As in, I'm alive, okay? You got the money, we'll give it to you. Oh, you want to check, you know, they, they sell your data all day long. And they have been collecting it because we've been giving it away. So that's the problem we have with big data. That's why I'm going to tell you why you've got to dump Google. You heard me right, dump Google. We don't want to give our data away from them because today they're saying it to advertisers. Tomorrow they're going to sell it to Big Brother. And the government already probably get to have a lot of that data. Then the third bunch of people we want to be concerned with are cyber criminals. Essentially, crime goes where the money is, crime has moved online. So, you know, sort of 20 years ago, if you had a little business or you lived here and you're worried about crime, it was, you know, people who lived in your neighborhood. Now it's people who live in Brazil and Pakistan and China and, you know, Germany and all over the place. And, you know, in fact, we look, did you know what one of the largest areas for, for uh, online crime and scammers is right here? From Miami to West Palm Beach, this is, there's a lot of scammers and crooks and, you know, people who commit all kinds of fraud right here. We live in one of the hot spots. Any case, so that's, that's, that's the threat. Protect yeah, but, so protect ourselves. Okay, so the threat modeling is just basically a, a fancy word to say, um, how are we going to respond? Okay, <laughs> how are we going to respond? So cybersecurity, we know we look at apps like firewalls and anti-malware products, etc., um, and it's on any device, whether it's your phone, computer, tablet, I'm, I'm talking broadly here, okay? Fraud, it's an awareness. Uh, you know, recognize the scams so you can protect yourself. And fraud is rampant online, and we're going to look at some of them. And in privacy, again, we use privacy tools and apps. So cybersecurity, very briefly, let me give you some very practical ones here. Passwords. We all use passwords every day. A couple of things with passwords. If you use a password in an app, and you might think, John, this is ridiculous, I know this, okay, but you, you know how many people re how many, I'm not gonna ask for a show of hands how many people reuse the same password for multiple, no, I don't wanna see a show of hands, because <laughs> everybody does. The problem with that is, you know, when, when that company gets hacked and the company download, you know, and the criminals download this whole password file that's supposed to be uh, encrypted and we call it salted, whatever, added extra characteristics in. It's in plain text, you know, and you well, how can this big company that's got everybody's data, how can they not encrypt it? Because they're stupid and they're not reliable. It happens all the time, you know, Sony pictures and, you know, all the, I mean, it's the data brokers. How many, how many people got protection because data brokers were hacked? It happens all the time. Yahoo got hacked. You know, all these companies, Facebook was hacked. So we give them our data, they have it stolen or lost, they say sorry, maybe they don't even, now they have to report it, they get fined, but it doesn't help us because then your data ends up on the black web, on the dark web. So what happens, criminals go and they take that, and if they've got, a, a, and they know that most people reuse the same passwords and usernames, so they go to Amazon and Netflix and and when they crack, hack into those accounts, you might think, well, people aren't interested in my stuff. You are worth money. They can sell a, a username and a login to a Netflix account for $10 a piece, for Facebook $5 a piece. So they harvest, you know, 100,000 passwords. They check them out. They, they do bot. They don't sit there, and, you know, they send it into a system that runs out to all the popular packages and it says, okay, these 50,000 are the people that use the same password across all of these accounts and then they sell it. And then you wonder why, you know, uh, your, all of your uh, credit cards that are linked to these accounts get stolen. That's how it, how it happens, by the way. So passwords need to be long and unique. Um, you can do it manually. You can set a password. Um, I want to say long and unique. You can, if, if, if you don't want to use a password manager and you want to use a different password for everything, use a passphrase. You know, this is the day the Lord has made. 
That's your password, okay? It's a long phrase. And then at the end of it, if it's Facebook, you know, this is the day the Lord has made FB1, Facebook 1. This is the day the Lord has made, you know, Netflix, you know, something like that. That's how you create a password. That's, you, that's your own encryption language, basically. You've got a form of encryption with a password. Nobody, that's harder for somebody to crack. But don't use common words, names of actors, song lyrics, etc. All that stuff, because what happens when these guys, if somebody actually wants to crack into a system, they run all the thousands and the millions of common lyrics and names through password checkers to see if they can hack into your account. So, you've got to, so the easiest way to actually do it is to use a password manager. How many people here use a password manager? What is it? <laughs> all right. A password manager is a program that will automatically assign a unique password for every website you log into. So you don't have to create the unique password. It creates it for you. So write this down if you're taking notes. Last, L-A-S-T, pass, P-A-S-S. Last, pass. It's an app. You download it free of charge. Put it on your computer. Put it on your, your phone. There are others out there as well. Dash is another one. And then when you log in, when you go to log in to Facebook or, you know, uh, your Apple ID, etc., it'll or, or your email, it automatically will fill the password in for you so you don't, and it's essentially got everything in the vault, and you can create long passwords, short passwords. You don't need to remember them because the system automatically will fill it in for you. Quick question, another point about passwords. I, I see I'm going to have to cut this off because else we're going to be here. Um, how many people save passwords in their browser? You know the browser often says, do you want me to save this password? Don't ever do that because the browser, you can go to a site and these tools out there will literally steal those passwords right out of your browser. Same thing, oh, convenience. Convenience is the opposite of security. So we give up convenience. And this is how people catch us on the web because, you know, we think, oh, it's convenient. I'll just reuse the same password or I'll just save it in the browser. Then you go to a site and th that browser has got a vulnerability in it. They suck the whole file down. They don't even need to hack you. They've got your username and password. So get a password manager. And then a, ba a backup book. I have a little black book, <laughs> and I actually write the password. Because in case one day I can't get into, or the internet's down, or, or that site's down, I can't get into the password. So I have a little book. So you've got to have backups. Uh, don't worry, it, and it's on my bookshelf, and nobody knows where it is apart from my wife, okay? So, <laughs> so it's secure, but somebody would have to break into my house, okay? So passwords are really important. All right. Another big thing that you need to do and is add in, if you want to add in something called that to make yourself one step more secure than, than having good passwords, is multi-factor or two-factor authentication. Who uses multi-factor or two-factor authentication? Good, awesome, that's great. Every banking app or you know your um, social media accounts, you don't need to use it all the time, but if it's a, you really want to add security, essentially what that is is. You have, you know, when you go into a site and it says, let us SMS you and send you a code, and you get the one-time code and you put it in, that's a multi-factor. The factor, so username, password is one factor, two factors, and then the code is a three factor. So some people call it two-factor, others multi-factor. Um, you can download, I use a, a product called Authy. If you're taking notes, it's A-U-T-H-Y, A-U-T-H-Y. Authy is a free app. Multi-factor authentication, download it, put it on your phone, put it on your computer. Uh, Google has an authenticator as well. LastPass has an authenticator. That enables you, and most apps, if you go into security, you say enable multi-factor or enable, and you just go and you, uh, and you switch it on, and they will ask you to actually scan the code it gives you and then put the password back in, and then you, you go here. If I have on my phone, Authy, I pull up, I've got about you know eight different passwords here, all my crypto and bank accounts. So w the reason you do that is, even if all my, say now I get hacked, uh, you know, um, and, and or my password file gets hacked or something, last files gets hacked, they can have my username and my password, but if they don't have my phone, then they still can't get in because it's one factor they don't have. So it's, and of course, some people now there's biometrics, so you know you can look into like your phone and it'll use a biometric scan. Um, that'll act as a third multi-factor. So, you know, that's called frictionless commerce where you have another multi-factor. Did you have a comment? No, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, don't you? Oh, sorry. 
thumbprints. So any biometric that creates a data file, it really depends where that data file is, you know, whether it's a thumbprint, etc. cetera. Um, you know, there's some debate. Some companies store them on their servers and they can essentially be stolen. Then, you know, you can't change your thumbprint. We can, it's kind of painful, I guess. But um, the easiest thing, you know, most of, most of them are, you know, they're probably as secure as anything else. Personally, I don't like biometrics. I prefer having, you know, something like this because I can change it. But, you know, biometrics does work as well. What if, about if Apple Keychain? How safe is that? Um, personally, I, would, I, I don't use it. Okay. Personally, I don't use it. It's probably pretty secure, but, you know, not, look, nothing is... The long passwords that it generates the random long passwords that Apple yeah, Keychain yeah, I mean generates it's, stores it's, for you. Yeah, I mean, you can use that. I prefer to use, you know, third-party products. So I don't want really Apple keeping my security. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, um, it's better than, than not doing it, you know, and just typing in passwords. Um, remember, you're just trying to protect yourself from hackers. The government, by the way, if the NSA decide they want to get your data, they will get it. Okay, so they, they, will, they will probably, you know, and they will subpoena companies like Apple and et cetera, and, you know, they, they get whatever they want. So, but, you know, we're not trying to be super criminals trying to protect ourselves from the government. It's the privacy. We, we just don't want the government big brother tracking. All right. Software patches and updates. How often do you see this come up, you know, install? Who, who installs them? Please install them, <laughs> because generally they are there because there's a vulnerability in the software that's been found, and this fixes that. So ensure one of the easiest criminals or site, you know, on they, they they will create a website. It's called a, you know, essentially a drive-by download. You don't even know. You go to this website. They put some malicious code there, and if you're and it's looking for computers that connect to the site that are not patched, and and you connect to the site, and next minute. You just got this download onto a computer. It's a key logger that's logging your stuff, and you don't even know. So you want to keep patched as, as much as possible. Um, social engineering. Social engineering is essentially a fancy word to say that you know there's criminals online that will use the data that we freely give away to learn information about us that they can use against us. And it often happens. It, this look. This generally happens when companies decide. Some guy, some criminals, or, or maybe some hacktivists, uh, online activists, might decide they don't like Pastor Corey because they heard him say something that they don't agree with online. So they're going to look on his social media to try and get everything. I'm just picking on you. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> look, because he's spoken a lot about himself, and then they can kind of pretend to impersonate him to try and cause him damage. So that's what social en engineering does. And it's normally... You know, some, and ha this is normally um, something that happens in the business world. Where's um, uh, over the back? Leslie under understands that companies will, you know, when 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 you you know get a mortgage and, and you're paying monies, they will, you know, send. So, oh, you know, this is send this money if your escrow account or your mortgage payment, and it's a total fraudulent account because they looked online, they saw, oh, this person's buying a house, and because you spoke about it online. Wait until you bought the house before you talk about it online and send photos, okay? There are people actually looking for this stuff. You know, this is what they do, and they, they, they do it full time. Is, is there a way to get off everything? Is there a way to get off everything? Can you unmute the blue mic, please? Megan. Okay, she's saying Google, whatever. Um, gosh, yes. If you want to get off everything, yeah. uh, yes, you can delete your, your Google accounts, if you have Google accounts, which would delete essentially you know, your search history that they've kept and, uh, and get out of their system. And I'll tell you alternatives for them. If you want to just get yes, rid of yes, that, you, you, but there's still. I tried once, and it seems like it's still out there somewhere, unless you. So, so with Facebook, you can actually delete, but there will your account will still there will be copies on their backup systems because they have redundancy, multiple data centers. So if you've deleted and close your account, it'll still live in their system for a while, but eventually, you know, you'll get out of the system there, so... 
Um, there are companies that if you really want to delete your online footprint, there are companies that do that. And I forget the name of them, but you pay them, but they will go and delete you and you can kind of get off. And you can write to data brokers and tell them to you know, get off, you know, that you can actually get out of their system. But quite honestly, today we've all, there's so much we do online and so much of what we do is reported to data brokers. You know, every time you use a, a loyalty card at, you know, Walgreens or something because you're getting some points, they're selling that data. That's why they do these things. One of the things I just want to talk to you about is phishing. This is not a misspelling. This is how it's spelt in hacking, okay, and fraud. I, I just need to interject. As a pastor, I have dealt with so many people here that have been either hacked or, or frauded or, you know, scammed. So please listen and please do protect yourself. You know, people just think that we're wasting time here tonight. You have no idea how many people that I've dealt with, they come to me, pastor, I got this email, I got this, I got that. You've got to protect yourself. Like, for example, you go start a, a just go start an LLC, you'll start getting Mail from a whole bunch of people saying, send us a hundred bucks and then, you know, we'll send you your certificate. It's free. Download it from Sunviz. Oh, yeah, it's, it's but, scam. you know, people don't know that and they'll send them a hundred bucks to get the certificate that they can actually go download for free on, the, on, on sunviz.org, you know. So, you learn these things and you'd be surprised how little people know about these things. Educate yourself. Listen to what he's saying. I've had people here uh, scan for, from th of thousands of dollars from emails and other things. Uh, we have a couple of people that can't even open a bank account, but their identity was stolen because they, they were not smart. So please listen to these things, and um, it's very, very important, okay? Yeah, just, just uh, identity theft, and I haven't actually mentioned it here, but obviously that's a, you know, so we're going to be here for hours and hours, but identity theft, you know, obviously you can go to Norton LifeLock and, you know, things like that, and you can, or just go and lock your credit file, you know, just go and freeze your credit file. It's a hassle when you want to open an account because you can't buy anything if your credit file is locked, you know, you can't get credit. So if somebody steals your identity and they apply for credit to go and, open, you know, get a new phone or service or anything or take a mortgage, they can't do it because, you know, it comes back and it's locked. So you need to make certain you keep the code and keep a little file of, okay, this is how I can unlock it <laughs> because it's a real problem. But just go and do it, and it's free and easy to do. You used to have to pay, and then they changed it, and you, you just contact the three companies, you know, the three main ones, and, and just lock your credit file. You can freeze it or lock it. Okay. Um, the unfortunate fact is the reason when it comes to fraud, the most common victims are the elderly. They get scammed more than anybody else because criminals know that they are generally, you know, more vulnerable and, and gullible, you know, or not as tech savvy. And Christians especially are gullible. I mean, in a nice way. Because we, you know, generally we believe the best of people. We believe, you know, people come and come, come to sell you this investment scheme, um, or ask you for money or stuff, and we tend to believe them, you know, but it's, you know, it's common, and, you know, pastors will tell you that Christians, particularly people target churches, they get in churches and they target them. All right, so different types of phishing attack, and I'm going to go through this very quickly. There's generic phishing where people actually, you know, uh, and we all get hit with that, etc. Then there's something called spear phishing or whaling. Spear phish will be if I'm a cyber criminal, or I'm an activist, you know, and I don't like what Pastor Corey has to say about the whole green agenda. I'm going to target him. It's called spear phishing, okay? And, and you totally tie that with, you know, some social engineering or whaling when you go after the, you know, and, the big fish. Many people have been scammed by fake uh, social media accounts. People have given one lady in Canada, she thought she was sending money to our ministry in Turkey, sent $3,000, got scammed by, by a fake uh, Instagram account. Yeah. It's just crazy. And she was an elderly woman. W what, one, of the, one of the things you want to do in Facebook is hide your contacts. How many of you have had somebody go and set up a fake account? So it happened to me. Somebody set up a fake John Berry Facebook and then they went to all of my contacts to make friends with them. And the reason why I do is because they want to scam them. And then once they go, then they can go to there. So just hide your contacts. And if they can't, they don't know who your friends are, who they're going to scam. So... Hide your friends on Facebook. Make your friends not visible. Go into your settings, say friends only visible to yourself. And then scammers on Facebook can't, you know, the person who's, it's no good impersonating a fake Rick if I don't know who to scam, you know. 
because they can't just try and make friends with anybody. They've got to go to your friends to try and ask you to friend them. Okay, CEO fraud. CEO fraud happens in any, if you've got any kind of company, they will impersonate the CEO. Oh, can you please send this payment to so-and-so? It's urgent. And, you know, who's not going to listen to an email from the CEO? So if you're in business, just kind of tell your staff. It happens all the time. Free giveaways. Oh, you've won this thing here. Just confirm your, you know, your credit card details. No, just go away, please. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Friendship. Um, you know, we call them, you know, sweetheart attacks, frauds, dating apps, single ladies. It's scammers out there by the gazillions, and they come along and they win people's. And they've always got some big idea of that they're going to win money or, or they've got a reason why they can't physically meet you. And meanwhile, this person who looks like, you know, whatever your, you know, type is, <laughs> is some dude in Nigeria who's <laughs> busy sending messages to, please send me $500,000 because I've just been arrested or, you know, whatever, you know. Or I have to invest in this great scheme. I'm going to make so much money. And if you're a Christian, because it's going to be for the kingdom of God, don't do it. I mean, give money to the kingdom of God, but not to the guy in Nigeria who's in you know, to get it right. Okay, investment to frauds. Um, I've got this great deal. These Iraqi dinar bits of paper, you know, who wants to invest them because they're going to go up a gazillion fold and you can put the money into the kingdom of God, brother. No, go away. Um, investment fee, you know, these are the common kind of things. Let me just show you what some of them look like. Gold and diamonds in Africa. There you go. Yes, I've got this. We had a, a Finnish businessman in, in the River Helsinki. He went to Africa. He never... He never made it back. They frauded him of three million euros. He was he kept chasing after all this African gold and <laughs> diamonds and stuff. Crazy stuff. Crazy, yeah. So I don't know if, if you if you can see this here, but this is a, the type of message you get. Here, here's here's a, here's a one from PayPal. We've permanently limited your account. Most fraudsters try and create a sense of urgency and panic to make you do something quickly. Here, click on this link below. Sincerely, PayPal. You know, does that look like a PayPal link to you? No, of course not. Even though they've got HTTPS, you know, they actually, it's, it's, a, it's a fake link signing. First of all, you never click on a link like this because it's going to take you to a fraudulent site you don't want to go, go to. Or it'll go to a site, like in this case, it goes to one here that looks so real until you look up here and you look at that URL and you think, oh, hang on, that's not PayPal's URL. But most people, oh, my account's limited. Quickly, put my username, password in here, log in. And the scammer goes, thank you. I'll take that. Go into your main one. Before you know, you've got no funds left and they've drained your bank account that was linked to your PayPal account. Okay. Amazon, that happens, here, here's one, Amazon, for, here's one for, for, for Verizon. You know, you get these, your accounts... Uh, security needs validation. This is another one. So click on a link here. And if you look at the link here, you think, well, hang on a second, there's a typo in here. But oh, maybe this is one of their URLs. No, it's not. You always, or if you get a number from any email or call from support, um, never give out your personal information on the phone or via email. Or, you know, no, you never give your credit card, your social security number, your date of birth your dog's name, anything, okay, just don't give it to them. Just say, hang on a second, what company are you from? And then you go look it up and you phone the company. Or just say, just give me the email here, and then you go, and you go to their website and you, you contact them directly. But this one's, I mean, this one, look here, V Wireless XYZ. So XYZ, as a high-level domain, is known for scammers. I, I, I used to have John Bay XYZ and I got rid of it because they once, I had the people warnings coming up when they tried to go to my website that said, no, this possible scam. I thought, oh, I forget that one, so I changed it. But, so XYZ is known as a, you know, a lot of scammers. They will take a, a popular brand name, River West Palm Beats Church and XYZ, and then try and impersonate your church. Send your money here. So, but this, I mean, this is a really good one. Uh, this Verizon website here, I mean, that looks like a, like if you didn't see the URL and you weren't awake, you might load all of your information in here and then your account and then they lock you out and then they, uh, you know, buy stuff on your phone or they you're linked to your credit card and suck money out of it, etc. The, pro the problem is, you know, most scammers, scamming is big business. The guys who, who scammers in Brazil, Eastern Europe, all over, they, they run their companies like, like real software companies. They have beta testers, they have quality control, they have UX people, designers. I mean, they're a real, and they've got criminal enterprises give, 
basically funding them. Shark tank for criminals. <laughs> Bring us your best idea and we'll fund it, literally. So, all right. DHL, here's another one, that, you know, uh, an email here. Click on this link, you know. Look, what's, what's the problem you see straight away? Especially if they know you're, you know, you're a client of, of DHLs. Look at, look at the email, Harper, a polytype, dash USA. No, that's not a DHL. But most people don't do that. So the way to tell, even if you can't see it, and if there was another link in here, and you have got to hold your mouse over it, and it'll show you what the URL is. And then you see, oh, this. because even if it looks legitimate here, when you hold it on it, the email, often I check and, you know, it spans, see who's the email from. And, and because you can, you can uh, spoof an email. I get an email. On the email, it'll tell you it's the real thing. But if you mouse over it or you click to expand it, then you can actually see the real link behind it. So you've just got to be awake. Okay. Crypto scams are all over. The, there's crypto scam. Would you believe, Postco, there's crypto scams on YouTube? You go on YouTube and you're seeing, you know, there's loads of them here. Live video, giveaway, 10,000 Ethereum. Oh, yeah, I want some of that. And you go on there and, it's, and you look at it and it's a live video. Meanwhile, these guys took a live video and they put it up on YouTube and then they have this little address there. And it's always, send us money and we will double it. This here's one from Elon Musk. They, you know, look at the Elon Musk. That's, his, that's on Twitter. That's Elon Musk. But look at Camberlink. I mean, Camberlink, what is that? You know, that's not Elon Musk. Here. But it's reply, Dogecoin giveaway promise sponsored by SpaceX. You know, here's an address. You, you send us 10,000 Doge and or double it and send. This, this happens all the time. You know how many people send money? Oh, great. I'm going to double my money. Because it sounds real. It looks real. I've got to do it quickly. It's a scam. Don't fall for it. Okay, is this helping? Yeah. Okay. Privacy. Very, very briefly on privacy. Stop. Most, pe most companies only can... You, we, give, we give them our data. Stop giving them your data. <laughs> um, when they ask you for security questions, when you log in for something, choose the security questions you want. You know, mother's maiden name. Just... Where were you born? Put in there Mars. It doesn't matter. As long as you remember what you put in, it doesn't have to be real. Okay. Date of birth, you know, 1st of January, 1800. They, they don't know. As long as it's a real date of birth that you put in next time. So don't, stop giving away your private data. Um, social security. When you know when you go to the doctor, want your social security? No. I, don't, I never give out my social security unless it's a federal. It's cooked. All right. Can I still got a few more minutes? Okay. Um, a privacy, a couple of tips on privacy. Set up multiple emails. The, pr the way to, to keep your, your data private is to scatter your tracks on the internet. Your, you will have a digital footprint. So if you put everything into your main email, a companies can track and see where you are. But if you have five or six emails, I, I mean, I have emails on ProtonMail and, and GMX. I've got a whole Yahoo account I use. And then I have aliases. Do you know what an alias is? So in some accounts, you can set up multiple accounts. So I won't just have my name. I can have, you know, di different names, and I use them for different things. So I have a, an email I log in for, for Facebook that I only use for Facebook. It's on no other account. So if someone steals it, they can't, f or if somebody finds it and wants to find me on Twitter, they can't I have a totally different email on Twitter, a different photo on Twitter. Uh, you know, why are you doing that, John? Because I just don't want anybody to pull all my information together. I want to use different accounts. So on LinkedIn, I have a different email for LinkedIn, and I keep LinkedIn business. You know, Facebook is personal. Twitter is to go and find out what's going on, gathering information, and to get into Twitter arguments with idiots. But you know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I, used, uh, I say different things on, on, on different accounts, basically, and I have different aliases. Um, secu oh, typo there. Okay. Um, security questions, as I said, it, it doesn't matter what the questions are, what the answers are, just set up fake ones. Just, just remember what you wrote down, though. <laughs> okay. So there goes in my little book. I have, you know... Username, passwords, and the security questions. Um, you, your location tracker on your phone doesn't need to be on all the time. And if you really, do you, who knows what a Faraday bag is? Come on, all right. So a Faraday, you've seen the movie, have you ever seen, the, who ever saw that movie Enemy of the State with Will Smith? 
Remember when he didn't want to be tricked, he took the, his phone and he put it in a bag, you know, like a little chip bag, like a little crinkle bag. And maybe that'll work, maybe not. But you actually get a bag called a, Far a Faraday cage, you know, is, you know what a Faraday cage is in, 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 in electricity? And, you know, basically, you can, um, I think it was Tesla, he built this essential cage and you could have electricity hit come in, it goes up totally around it because the Faraday cage protects the person inside it. So nothing can escape from a Faraday cage and nothing can get into it. So you get a bag, you can literally put your mobile phone in like a little, and it protects any signals getting in and out. So I can have my phone, put it in a Faraday. So if this is not, but say now you went to a, a, a peaceful protest somewhere and you didn't want certain people to know that you were at the peaceful protest as happened on a certain day, which we're not going to talk about, you know, in a certain city up in Washington, D.C. And just have a Faraday bag and you put your phone in it and you take it with you there. Then they can't because the police have a device called a Stingray device. And a Stingray device, you know your phone connects to certain cell towers. And a Stingray device is what the police use when they are trying to surveil criminals. And they're supposed to get, um, essentially, permission to use them. They can't just go and surveil, you know, the, the, the general public. But they don't. They do in any case. Um, it's the only time I agree with the use, with the, you know, use, um, ACLU is when they fight for privacy. But basically, you know, if anybody is at a, at a, at a rally or a political protest and, and they come with a Stingray, they can go at this and they can pick up every cell phone there because your cell phone will think that the Stingray device is a cell phone tower. It'll connect to it and you, you have a footprint just as you have an IP address. So if you get a Faraday bag, then you put your phone in the Faraday bag and you're not there. You're invisible to everything. Okay, you, you can't. If you take your phone out, you start taking photos, of course, then you've just exposed yourself. But in any case, that's what a Faraday bag is. And I just want to tell you about Google very quickly. Um, Google have been, they're probably one of the big, they suck up data in every app. My advice, and, and of course, they, they, have, they had their, their um, theme of, you know, don't do evil. They support every kind of, evil that you, you wouldn't agree with under the sun. So there are tons of alternatives. Get off Gmail. Get, use ProtonMail. Pastor Corey used it. You know, I use it. It's a private email out of Switzerland. It's encrypted. And you can get a free account. I use GMX as well. It's another German email. I've been use, using it for years because they've got different private privacy laws there. Then, you know, the Europeans actually take privacy a lot stricter than, 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 than we do in America. Uh, get off Chrome, get rid of that browser. You know, you don't need it. The Brave browser is, the, it's a Chrome equivalent. Um, so use the Brave browser or use Firefox or Opera. So use all of them. I, I mean, I have them all on my phone and I use them for different things. And when I'm, I'm scattering the breadcrumbs, okay? So if somebody really wants to track me, uh, whether it's the government or a hacker trying to create a profile or, you know, it's just big data. It's like, you know, I'm really difficult to track because I'm all over the place, different browsers, different emails, etc. cetera. Um, you Google search saves everything you're interested in. You, you know, and we don't, today we might think, well, these companies, they're just selling it. You know, today there's no nefarious purpose, but in future, who knows what they're going to use this data for. If they bring out a social credit score, this is the place where they're going to see who you associate with, who your friends are, who your contacts are. Why give this data away? So get off a Google search, use DuckDuckGo, and I know it's probably, you know, I, I don't know a better security one at the moment, but it's a, they don't save everything you search. So there's no record of what you searched for. Um, Google Docs. Um, you know, the online free, you can, if you can use Microsoft, I don't care. I, or use Open Office. Anybody use Open Office? Open Office, it's a great, it's a free Office um, under Open Software License, free Office Suite. There's multiple Apache, other companies you can download use there. It's a full Office Suite. You don't need to be paying money to Google or Microsoft, uh, or to, to uh, Microsoft. Um, Google Drive, you know, for storage. I use a product called Sync, which is a Canadian company, and it's you can get started off from a free account, um, and that's all encrypted as well. Uh, Google Photos, you know, Flickr, they, and you know, this list could go on. There's no need for you to use a single Google product, ever. There's alternatives, and if you want more alternatives, just go and type in, you know, Google alternatives in your DuckDuckGo 
search you know, on your Firefox browser and you'll come up with a whole list of alternatives. All right. Any questions? Is that helpful? Blue mic, please. The debit cards, you can go and tap, and it takes your information. And people don't realize that those who walk by with scanners, by your wallet, in your pocket, it takes all your information. They know your address, your account number, and everything. So people should take the extra step and cover the card so that signal does not leave your wallet and get an RFID protective wallet. Yeah, 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 RFID protected wallet if, if, if you're concerned about that, absolutely, yes. That's what I use. Yeah. Who else? <clears throat> no. uh, I went to, I, I mean, I, I want people to know this. I went to downtown and I parked in the parking lot there in downtown and all, only time I used my credit card was in the parking lot. You know, when you were coming out of the parking, uh, parking lot, they call it, right? The yes, okay. covered parking. So when y you come out of the parking uh, place, you, you paid? You use your credit card, and then I, my credit card uh, copied or something with the machine over there, and then I got fraud, you know? Yeah, you have basically, the, the, they put a credit card copier in the slot and they exactly. drop them inside. Exactly. And so when, whenever I buy gas, I always, uh, or I get it at Costco, but I, I used to, if you don't, just go, go, never use your card at the machine. Go inside and pay cash. Or even use your card inside. Because criminals, uh, Florida, as I said, we live in the epicenter. They get a little device, they drop it inside there, and, and, and when they come to retrieve it, they don't even need to open the pump they, or, or any, you know, they literally go by and they, or it's Bluetooth and they connect and they download all the data of you people know, who have used it, their credit card. Normally, uh, parking sp places, they, they don't work. The human doesn't work there. Yeah. So you have to, you know, put your credit card in, you, you pay, yeah, you, you, you you've, leave so that You've got place. to check, you know, your statements. Unfortunately, so if you can pay cash in place, it's good. But unfortunately, that happens in America. They've caught, they've found those things in ATMs outside. They've even found them in Walmarts and in stores. You know, people come up and they create one and it plucks straight over. Guys will come up and they're covered up and they click it on. And when yeah. you put your cord in, there's a cord. Put your reader. hand on there and see if you can pull something yeah, off. If it, if it looks off for dubious, don't use it. So never use an ATM outside, if possible, or, or in a little, you know, convenience store. Always go inside. Well, listen, it's pouring, so might as well stay here. <laughs> Sorry, I've taken all this time, fine. I think. <laughs> We're fine. It's pouring. Nobody's going anywhere. Yeah. Yes. So you said to get off of Gmail, and you said another... Proton Mail. Proton... Proton Mail. It's Proton encrypted. Proton Mail. Okay. I've been using yeah. it for 10 years. Okay. Yeah. Proton Mail. P-R-O-T-O-N-M-A-I-L. Yeah. Proton Mail. Yeah. And there's a free version of it. Yeah. I think yeah. it's free. Yeah. Most I have the paid version, so like, like I actually have d my own domains, but they route through Proton, and they're encrypted. So it doesn't look like Proton Mail, but it's actually going through Proton right, okay. Mail. Is there a way to get rid of an email address? Oh, e to get rid of it? You mean an old one that you've used? Not really. You know, I mean, you can go and close your account, but any, obviously any emails associated with that, what I would do is I would set up a new email account and then move everything over or set up two separate email accounts and sort of separate your business, you know, keep your business away from your personal life and time to um, get off gmail and yahoo mail yeah yeah get off the get off those guys they they scan your emails and at the moment it's for advertising last question today. oh well i guess we have two i just have a quick question for google class room how does that affect getting rid of what you use to like for google classroom did you say Google Classroom, as in the te I, As I in don't, school. I don't know if, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know if there's an alternative. More, more, more I mean, if, if there's school users out, that's what you've got to use, unfortunately. Yeah. But, you know, in your personal life, you there, can make There really choice. isn't any personal information on Google Classroom. No. Yeah. No. So what we're going to do now is how many of you have a marketing campaign program, anything that you do to promote, to promote your business? Does anybody do anything right now? 
Okay, we got a couple hands. So what I'm going to share with you is going to be short and sweet. I kind of made it a, a simple one. You do have a handout, and I'm not going to follow it, or I might. You never know. So um, what, when, we're, when we're at the end, if I haven't filled in any of the blanks, then we'll go ahead and do that for you. But the first thing we want to talk about is the motivation for what you are doing, what you are sharing. And I'm a real big fan of making sure that you're being authentic, and that you're sharing the truth, and that you are understanding that this marketing that you're doing is not about you. You have to make it about the client that you're trying to reach, the customer that you're trying to reach. You have to give more value than you even expect to receive. So that, that is the number one thing that you need to do. The marketing is not about you. I have a verse here, you know, it says, you know, you have to have your mind set on others. So in Philippians 2, 3, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. And so when you do think of others before yourself, in most cases, there's no way that you can't be successful and you cannot build those relationships, which... When we're doing our next thing, which is creating your marketing piece, how many of you like to write? How many of you write your own email, your own content? Okay, how many of you want to write your own content? And do you know what that means to write content? When you're writing a content of marketing, think of it as writing a letter. Think of it as writing something that would grab your attention if you were reading it. So you want to give value, and you want to remember that you are what I call the creative force behind the marketing piece. So you want to use powerful words. And powerful words are easy to come by, but you have to think about them. So having a conversation in your marketing piece is great, but you have to be able to use the words that are going to catch somebody's attention. So if you, if you feel, um, some people think that when they're doing marketing and sales that it's, it's kind of an odd feeling to ask for a sale. It's an odd feeling to say, um, uh, could you, you know, pony up your checkbook or your credit card? But you have to get past that because if you're in business, whether you call it sales, whether you call it sharing, whether you call it anything, it really is a sales industry, it is a sales business, and you're selling yourself. You're selling what you can offer the people that you're talking to. So remember, use powerful words, which we're gonna to get to a little bit more in, the, in a minute. When, when I have a full training that I did on subject lines, so some of this is, is, is kinda of gonna reference a subject line and it's gonna reference an email. Now many of us know that there are other ways than just email, but what I like to do is think of anything I write in terms of a subject line. So the subject line is your eye catcher. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna write something that will catch the attention of the person. So um, let me see what uh, let's see what we got. In. I'm kind of rushing, not going through a little bit quicker. Think of some emails that you may have received. And they might have been spam, but you know what? Spammers are really good at getting your attention. Yeah. So think of, some, right. think of some of those emails. Like, like you know, we, we missed your reservation. You're immediately going to say, well, I didn't reserve for you. So you're going to click and look at the site. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to click through a site and get scammed but it does mean that they got your attention and you know perhaps it's somebody you've purchased from before and they go oh your order didn't go through well but i didn't order from you again yet but you're going to click on the email and you're going to say oh yeah what that got my attention so one of the things that i've done through the years is if i see an email and a subject line or words that i like i'll swipe it and i'll put it on a list keep it on my desktop and i refer back to it because i don't have to create and recreate the wheel. So if it caught your attention, it most likely is gonna catch somebody else's. So that's, um, and then you have a list of a few, I'll tell you about those in a minute, but there are a few of 
the ones that I thought were kind of catchy so that you could use them if you want. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see, yes, okay. When you do your writing, what I think is very, very important is you need to review your work. Now, there are a lot of people out there that may use a company to write for them. I know we talked about Fiverr one time when I was up here doing some teaching. And you can hire someone to write for you. You can have your high school student write for you, but you need to look at it. You need to make sure that whatever's being produced represents you. It represents how you feel. Plus, you want to make sure there's no, no mistakes because uh, sometimes we make mistakes and we don't catch them right away. Someone else writing for us or creating some content for us may also write something and the mistakes are there. So. The big thing that I do is review and approve every marketing piece that you have that's going out. So Michelle and I are the face of integrity. So integrity land title, you might see some things going out. 99% of it, we've actually written and edited ourselves. However, the two of us are editing each other. So if you see some of the things that we've created that have pictures on it, I might have taken the picture, Michelle edits it, edits it. You know, I may have created the brochure, but she's going to go in there and tweak it and see something that I might have missed. So you need to have a second set of eyes on something. So that is, that is critical because your first impression is what's going to make a difference. The other thing is you want to make sure that your links work properly. How many of you have ever clicked on an email link and it didn't work? How annoying is that? Not a good first impression or a second impression or a third impression. So if you happen to be using an email editor like Constant Contact or MailChimp, you want to make sure that you send it to yourself first and make sure all those click-throughs work. And you want to make sure everything else is covered too so that you don't lose a click-through. So that's probably a topic for another time. You want, to, you want to make sure that you have pictures and words have embedded either website links on it or something that you want them to do. And um, so that's just... You're going to have to train yourself if you're using an, an email editor. Um, let me think. I'm going to not do the whole list for you today. The other thing that we find is critical is when you do your, e if, and this is all relating to email right now, when you do your email to someone and it's going to go out to a bunch of people, you want to make sure that it is viewable in different formats because you have computer, phone, tablet, different kinds of phones. So get, get to know that before you just start sending things out and thinking, well, sending something's better than nothing. Not really. It's better to do nothing. The other thing is in the mailing list. How many of you have a mailing list? Anybody? You have a contact list that you, that you use? OK, and why not? If you're in business or want to be in business, you need a contact list. That doesn't mean that you have to send something to them every day or at all, but you need to have the list. We started doing our list for integrity back in 2004, and we've got like five, 6,000 people on it. I don't email to them all. I don't talk to them all, but I do use the list, and some of the business comes back over it, and, I'm, and from a Christian viewpoint, I'll pray over the list and say, okay, Lord, we need some more business today. Can you please send it? You know, and people that we've worked with in the past have come to us, and I haven't reached out to them and asked for the business. So just being aware of who your clients are is very important. Put your friends, put everybody you know, any of you that are in a, a direct sales company, they have what's called the Dame Joggers. You need to do it. Go through your phone. I'm sure you've got people in your phone you haven't talked to in a while. Just make sure they're in your contact list and that you don't forget about them. The other thing that's important too in emails and in any type of marketing actually, because my next topic is going to tell you and remind you that you need to just create one marketing piece and you can use it in a lot of different ways. So you need to always be honest and you need to make sure that you are presenting yourself properly. I could turn my sheet. Thanks for your patience, guys.
Before I go on to that topic, I want to remind you where you're going to meet people and how you're going to build those relationships. You're going to meet them here at church. You're going to meet them at networking business breakfast events. If you're not going to a business networking event outside of the four walls of the church, then you need to pick one and start going. It's easy to find them. You can find them on our wonderful Facebook has an events page. I, I like Meetup. Meetup still has some good stuff on it. And there's some other ways as well that you can look. You can go to Chamber of Commerces. I know, um, where are they? Are you guys on the Chamber of Commerce out in Wellington? No? Yeah. No? Okay, so you haven't done that one yet? That's a good chamber. <clears throat> and then you have um, seminars just pretty much anywhere that people are, you can go. And another thing that I think is good is it serves two purposes. You can go to an event, take someone with you that kind of makes you a little less nervous, and the host of your event is going to love you because they've just increased their volume by two for attendees. So get rid of the excuses is the bottom line. You have no excuse not to build your business. If you are not in a business, then you need to not only look for one, but go to some of these places and see what other people are doing. See what might resonate with you. That would be my suggestion on that. Now, one of the, the final things that I absolutely love to do is I create one marketing piece. I usually start with my email, and I have, um, I have segments. For instance, in the title insurance world, we have some series that have different parts to it. So I may do a teaching on first-time home buyers, and I'll break it down into four or five different email blasts to the clients. So in whatever industry you're in, think of what would benefit the people that you want to reach, and you can use it for email, you can use it for a handout, you can use it on social media, you can use it for a blog, and you know Instagram and the good old-fashioned mail. I have, in the past few years, gone back to mailing things to people. Now, in my industry, I happen to have their mailing address because it's kind of like what we get from them. And we send it to them. And we, with my clients and my realtors, they're pretty much online. So, I mean, you can get them. So give them something they can hold in their hand. If you do that, then you're kind of going against the grain. So always think to do something different that other people aren't doing. And it's okay to do something that sounds outdated. Better. Yes, that rain is crazy. So I guess I don't need to rush. That's a monsoon <laughs> out there. <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> uh, let's see now, too. Um, that, I, oh, it's it is crazy. Now. So anyway, always remember, if someone doesn't know what you do, they can't do I business with you. I rebuke any kind of leaks in the name of Jesus. <laughs> there better not be any leaks. I rebuke it now in Jesus' name. I right, seal so every leak. <laughs> you get a little nervous when that stuff happens. Huh? So, I, so I kind of rushed through the information. <laughs> so, so what are we seeing? As, I, can, I can give you the answers that are on the little handout Yeah, can handout we fill in sheet? these blanks? Huh? Did we fill in the blanks? No. Oh, I want to fill in the blanks. Okay. I love filling. Who likes filling in the blanks? <laughs> Man, I want to fill in That's the blanks. That's what I said. I was kind of going out of order so they wouldn't be able to do it. All right, so in, in the fill pen? in the blanks. Who needs a pen? Pastor. Everybody got a pen? Who needs a pen? We got some pens there? We do. And you know what? There will not be a test on this. <laughs> Next Unless, time of we course, hand the stuff pastor decides to, let's right? Let's have pens ready. Okay, Arches. you guys ready? Who needs a and, pen? And I'm, and right. I'm, and I'm real good in the. Uh, I love, I love the teacher mode. So, this is you why I like handouts. You have to speak up. It's getting All loud right. out there. Speak oh up. My God. All right. So, words for your marketing program. The first thing we must realize is that your marketing is not about you. The next one we have is use powerful words that grab the attention and call the reader to take action on what you are offering and saying to them. The words in your subject line are critical. Subject line. That's when you're doing an email. 
or actually even if you're doing a text blast, anything, you've got to grab their attention. And in today's environment, the shorter the better. Review and approve every marketing piece. Don't leave your business to someone else. That's not, that's not a blank. <laughs> um, and the business begins with relationships. Write, W-R-I-T-E, the marketing tool once. Consider using the same one as the basis for all platforms, such as email, social media, blogs, Instagram, and mail. Everybody got them? This is crazy out there. <laughs> so the other thing that I gave you was a sampling of marketing words and phrases that I put together through the years. You're welcome to use these. More importantly, I'd like to see that it spurs you to make your own. Sometimes when you read something, it makes you, you know, jump into action to create your own. But, but look and see what's catching your eye and then write something different. I say that to say that sometimes what is good for you may not be good for somebody else. So mix up your, mix up your subject lines. You could also, if you're sending emails, you can send the same email with different subject lines and people will open it when you, when you switch that up.